So my major weak link with Suzuki-based axles are the small 8mm hub bolts. Especially when you have good axle shafts, that becomes the weak link for sure. So I'm going to show you how to go through and change those out to 7 sixteenths. Um, I'll show you the difference, much larger, much stronger. So here's the uh, kind of size and option stock bolt, break easy. This is an ARP stud. It's actually meant for a Toyota, but it's virtually the same. Um, these break, in my opinion, just as easy. And this is what I'm going to be going to. 7 16 fine thread. Um, you can see the thread engagement on this is really in the hub. It's only about 3 8 of an inch deep. Same with these. This gets about a full inch of thread engagement into the hub. Makes it a lot more stable. Um, then also run lock washers, but make sure to use ones that are specific for button or uh, Allen bolts because they're uh, narrower on the OD. They fit under the head better. This side I've already done. And you can see another reason to use the Allen head specific lock washers is just for space. I mean, the, the wheel basically scrubs over the heads of the bolt when it goes on. So this is literally the biggest bolt you can do with this setup without having to modify your wheels or anything weird. I've heard from a lot of people that have done this on theirs that this just does not break. Um, unfortunately, the weak link now is probably going to be an axle shaft or possibly a pinion um, if you have low gears. Um, I've got the Sidekick 512 gears in this. It's a custom housing I built that uses a Sidekick rear third member. Um, hopefully that's not going to be my weak link, but time will tell. So basically you got to pull the hub off. Pull off the, you know, the brakes. Get the wheel hub off completely. I'll show you that when it's off. So here's the hub off. You can see the last time this broke. That was with the ARP studs. Kind of tore up the hub a little bit, but hopefully that'll get cleaned out enough when it gets drilled out. All right, I'll show you once it's drilled. Um, it's real important to use a drill press. Um, you want these holes to be absolutely straight up and down with the hub. Um, these ones might give me some grief. Hopefully this, it doesn't walk off to the side. See how it goes. I have a couple spares. Um, I'm on a time crunch. Local uh, auto parts store doesn't have any seals in stock. So I'm going to pack this with paper towels and mask it all off. Keep the drill shavings out. Hopefully that works. If not, tear it apart, clean the bearings, and get new seals. So I guess I didn't explain before. Um, the reason we go to 7 sixteenths instead of like 10 millimeters. Um, 7 sixteenths is basically how big you've got to go to clear out this taper. I've drilled this hole here. This is the, one of the original holes. It's tapered for those cone washers on the bolts. And by going to 7 sixteenths, it drills, you know, about 90% of that taper out. So it's just a straight hole. Um, and I just drill these to 7 sixteenths. It's pretty snug on those uh, fine thread cap screws. Um, if you want to be real anal, you could probably ream it to some size slightly smaller, but it's pretty snug on here. So I'm gonna finish drilling the rest of these out and then uh, start working on this. And again, I just mask this all off, just try to keep any, any of the shavings or any of the junk out and I'll wipe it out real carefully. Okay, so something I decided to do on those two holes that were all blown out before I drilled all the threads out, I put two bolts back in the hub and used the hub as a guide and just kissed the top to get it nice and concentric. Get rid of that smushed out, blown out area. So that way, when I drill this out to 3 8 and then the tab drill size, it stays centered. Just an idea. Hopefully it works out. Um, if you guys got hubs that are already damaged, I think this is going to be the way to save them. Okay, so here's all the holes drilled out to 3 8 um, Seem to work just fine using the hub as a guide, clean these out. Might lose like one thread at the very top, but we'll see once we get these cleaned out to the tap drill size. Um, the tap drill size I'm using is 25 64 
I think letter Q is probably the best one to use, but I don't have a good letter number drill set. All I got is a cheap Harbor Freight one, and I don't really trust them. I want one of those to break off in here. So we're going to go with this. Um, all the other holes seem to be nice and snug once tapped on the first two hubs I've done. So here we go. I'll show you when it's all done and then uh, the tricks I use to tap them. Okay, so I've got all the holes drilled out to the proper tap size, 25, 60 force. Um, so this is what I use to tap. It's not necessary, but man, it makes it easy. Um, found this online. It's around $100. So it's got different interchangeable little arbors to hold your taps. Um, and then it's got a nice long handle. Gives you good feel and good leverage. And it keeps it perpendicular to your work. I've tapped hundreds and hundreds of holes with this thing and not broken a single tap. It's definitely the way to go. Definitely worth a hundred bucks. Okay, so basically what I do is just set the thing in there and I'm gonna use the handle to butt up against the frame. Um, this thing came with a little sort of a vice thing, but since this hub is round, it really doesn't, it's really hard to hold on to. So I just use the handle um, I won't be able to film this as I'm doing it, but I, I hold some, some pressure down to make sure it stays flat against the table. So I get the, th the thread started. And then once it's started down half an inch or so, and, and I know it's good and square, then I'll, I'll just take this and hold on to it and uh, run it down with the handle. Like I said, this makes uh, tapping holes a breeze. It keeps everything straight. It's just, I normally hate tapping holes. It makes it easy. Show you what I, what I get when I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. I don't have a tripod right now. So hopefully uh, you'll see how easy this goes. That's it. it takes i don't know less than a minute per hole they're nice and straight no broken taps um I know a lot of people go nuts over tap magic and different lubes or whatever this cast material taps so easy in my opinion it's not worth the mess especially since i'm trying to keep the tape on here to keep any of the shavings out of my bearing so i'm just doing it dry it's cutting it just fine i've done uh, these will be 18 holes now with this one tap, and it still goes through like butter. So I think I'm doing okay. Okay, so that's all the holes tapped. I like to hit them with a countersink bit.
just give him a, a light countersink, help the bolt start, get rid of any burrs. And again, I wanted to show the big difference between the stock bolt and this. And then you can see, I mean, the, the difference in depth and diameter, and plus this is not even compressed yet, the lock washer. Um, hopefully it's as strong as everybody says. I'm gonna to put to the test here in a couple weeks. Um, King of the Hammers. Hopefully we do better than we did last year. Last year, got about two miles, transfer case blew up, but I think I got a faulty set of gears, but we'll see. But I didn't have any ha problems at hammers breaking hub bolts, but since playing in sand dunes and just doing other stuff, they broke a couple times. So we'll see what happens. Get this cleaned up and uh, put together and I'll show you the results. So one difference in putting it back together, the gasket has got, you know, holes meant for the little M8 bolts. So I don't use the gasket. I just use a little bit of gasket maker, put it on the face of the hub, a little thin coat, break clean it real clean first, both sides. <laughs> And then uh, torque the bolts down. Okay, there it is with the hub body installed. All the bolts Loctited and torqued. Again, thin coat of a uh, gasket maker to be a new gasket in there. Um, I would keep one of your old bolts around because it's helpful for getting that snap ring in there, pulling the axle out. It's nice, even RCV puts that same thread like the original axle shafts had. That pretty much wraps it up. Um, should be pretty bulletproof. Again, I went to uh, 58 foot pounds of torque on these bolts. Stock is in the 22 or something, low 20s. So the clamping force added with the extra depth and just the beef of the bolts, this thing should be pretty solid. Thanks for watching. Okay, there it is, all put together. One more thing. People can tell this is kind of not your average samurai. People are interested. Um, I might be doing a kind of walk around and explanation, pointing out all the things that are cool or unusual on it. Um, let me know. Um, really looking to build this channel. So if you guys could like and yeah, subscribe and all that normal stuff, that'd be great. Thank you.